Hi everyone, welcome to Bite Size Med, where we talk about quick, bite-sized concepts in basic medical sciences for study and rapid review. This is a short video on the surfactant and surface tension and respiration. The alveoli are the functional units inside the lung, and inside these alveoli is a fluid lining. Also inside the alveoli is air. So that creates an air-fluid interface. And whenever air and fluid come into contact like this, the water molecules that are on the surface, they attract each other and they try to form a small structure, a sphere. This is the same thing that happens with the raindrop, that air-water interface there creates that shape. So this creates tension, and that is called surface tension, because it's tension at the surface. Now imagine this happening inside the alveoli. The water molecules are contracting, air is leaving during expiration, so it's getting smaller, and the surface tension can make these alveoli collapse. More the surface tension, more the chances of them collapsing. The surface tension is an elastic force, so it's one of those things that causes the lungs to recoil. The other thing is elastin in the lung tissue, which stretches when the lung stretches. So these oppose stretching of the lung, and that stretching is compliance. So high surface tension, low compliance. Laplace's law for a sphere is that the pressure is twice the surface tension over the radius. This is the pressure that keeps the alveolus open and is proportional to the surface tension and inversely proportional to the radius. So that means if there's a high radius or a big alveolus, then less pressure is needed. It doesn't collapse easily while a smaller alveolus or one with a lower radius needs more pressure to keep it open, so it collapses easier. An alveoli have to be small, because that increases their surface area. Their main job is gas exchange, and one of the factors that affects diffusion is cross-sectional area. So what can we change in this equation for them to stay open? The surface tension. By lowering the surface tension, we can lower the pressure, and the substance that does that is surfactant. Surfactant is produced by type 2 alveolar epithelial cells, and it's a surface active agent. Its production starts later in gestation, around 24 weeks, and its main components are phospholipids, particularly dipomatoyl phosphatidylcholine, which is also called lecithin, or DPPC. There are other things too, like phosphatidylglycerol, surfactant, apoproteins, and things like that, but that lecithin, that increases with gestation. So what's measured is a less than sphingomyelin ratio, and that ratio becomes 2 is to 1 when surfactant matures in late gestation, by over 35 weeks. Now it's a phospholipid, which means it has a phosphate component and a lipid component, and it's amphipathic, so hydrophobic and hydrophilic portions. Hydrophobic means it doesn't like water, and hydrophilic means it does. The tails are the hydrophobic portion. They don't like the water, so instead they face the lumen, when they line up along the interface. Now this interface is responsible for the surface tension, so by lining up like this, surfactant reduces the surface tension. Now remember I said it has to be synthesized, so what happens if it's deficient? Alveoli have a more tendency to collapse. That's respiratory distress, and it's called neonatal respiratory distress syndrome, or hyaline membrane disease. So more the surface tension, more likely the alveoli will collapse. So surfactant produced by those type 2 cells, it lowers surface tension. More surfactant, more compliance. You can check out my video on compliance linked in the description box below. And surfactant also prevents those small alveoli from collapsing during expiration. And that is the surfactant and surface tension and respiration. If this video helped you, give it a thumbs up, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.